Hello and welcome. This one might be a little on the short side, so if you jump on and you have a question or a comment, then just jump to it. <laughs> Um, because this was this uh, was sparked actually from my experience uh, over Thanksgiving. Hello, hello, nice to see you. Thank you. Um, if you can't hear me, give some like big wave. Tell me you can't hear me. So, hi, hi, Jenna. <laughs> Good. Okay. So I had an experience. Um, leading up to Thanksgiving this year, we were gonna do Thanksgiving at my boyfriend's house. And uh, his, he's got a smallish house. And um, my dad, my stepmom, my mom, uh, my mom's mom, both our kids, and my boyfriend's sister. Anyway, like not like a ton of people, but all these people were coming. And a lot of them were my family. And I was feeling anxious about like how that was going to go in my boyfriend's house. And really, I, it was, I was kind of caretaking him. I had inside me, like, if I actually got underneath my anxiety, my anxiety was actually about, like, is he going to be okay? Which is, which is a common thing, I think, for humans to do. Maybe a little more common for women towards men, but um, regardless, I think there's like this human thing that's truly, this is a tangent. <laughs> anyway, it's actually, I think we pretend like we're caring about them, but actually we're afraid. Like if, if it doesn't go well for them, uh, what impact will that have on me? So even underneath, there's like my anxiety, underneath that was my anxiety about him, and underneath that, is actually my anxiety about me. Like, how am I gonna deal with if it doesn't go well for him? But that aside, I could feel that part of me. And I noticed, so this is kind of the first step in thinking about, um, well, I guess the first step actually in this idea of generosity really is this, like kind of getting into the layers, like what's actually going on, that there's generosity in that. But the, the real basis of that was I started to notice that I was coming up with ways to manage the situation. And so that awareness, that's one of the first steps, like awareness, like, oh, I'm trying to manage this. And I don't even know if he wants it managed. I could assume that he does, or I could assume what he wants or how I could manage it well. I know him pretty well, <laughs> so I have some ideas. I might be right, but instead of assuming, which maybe it's useful, I went on this tangent actually, because a lot of times our assumptions when we're, um, when they're kind of trying to manage a situation or uh, prevent something, then they're often trying to prevent our own feelings of anxiety. And instead of doing that, I picked up my phone and I just texted him. And I said, how can I support you best over Thanksgiving? I knew it was a lot of people for him and in his home and he was doing the lion's share of the cooking and um, you know all, all these various things. And I just asked him, I said, how can I best support you over Thanksgiving? And <laughs> so there's there's two, I would say that's why I call this Generosity 101, is it's super basic. And I think it's something that we often forget. Um, first, because we don't catch that we're starting to jump into managing things and making assumptions about what will actually help. But second, I think when I forget to ask, I also often have an idea that I should already know. If I was a good friend, if I was a good girlfriend, if I like, if I was a good person, who knows, you know, all these things, but somehow if I was better or something, something arises, it's like, I should know. I should already know exactly what to do. And that somehow it's a failing to ask. But 
I think it's really generous. It's basically saying, how can I love you? How would you like to be loved in this situation? And then being willing to actually love them in that way or support them in that way. And um, frankly, you know what he wrote back, the main thing he said, he said, because basically I want people to stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> I'm gonna pause for just a second. Um, beautiful suggestion, I will try that. But how can I remind myself in the moment when I'm trying to make everything okay for everyone? Um, so I'm going to touch on this again also when I talk about actually being in Thanksgiving, but it's such a great question. And some of that I would say, sort of number one, Christine, is that is even just having this little awareness, probably something will shift. And then it takes practice. Like it actually does take practice. Like, okay, I want to do this. When I'm starting to manage, I actually want to ask, how can I support you? And that will remind you, but you may have, like over time, I've sort of developed the capacity to notice my own, uh, I call it, you know, red flags. And I don't mean that in some dire warning signal sort of way, but they are. They're like a little red signal. It's like, um, you know, when you're about to close a document without, sharing, without saving it, and this little box pops up and goes like, are you sure you want to save that document without saving it? <laughs> that we have our own little, it's starting to notice what happens, what am I doing that could actually remind me? Instead of being a problem, we could go, oh, that's a reminder that I can ask. So that's kind of like a little homework project for you or for anyone else that wants to do that. Start to notice like, oh, this is what happens. I start moving really fast. Um, I start doing a bunch of things I don't want to do. Um, my attention all goes to the other person. Like who, all these different things. These are all just examples. And more important is noticing what you do. And let those actually be like a little pop-up box that goes like, are you sure you want to jump in and, you know, take over baking the turkey without asking? Things like that. Um, <laughs> and so I, let me know if that's helpful or not, or if you have a follow-up. But so I said, how can I best support you? And, you know, I had these ideas about ways he might want me to run interference or how he might want me to take care of the kids or just things like that. And he basically said, I just want people to stay out of the kitchen. Like, I want that to be my domain. <laughs> As I'm telling this, I'm realizing like kind of how adorable this is actually. <laughs> the, how much like he was baking a ham and he was, anyway, he was all these things. And um, the second, I would say then this, this I don't know what the order of these steps are and what number they are, but I'd say after that, it was believing him, like believing that that was true. And Jenna says, interesting and contrastingly, oftentimes people in need of help. Well, so this is, so Jenna, you're actually jumping to my next video, which is generosity 2.0. <laughs> So I think you have a really important point and that's sort of a second piece. So this is really like generosity 101 is like ask them. I also, I will say though to your, to your point, Jenna, which is that I didn't ask my boyfriend in the middle of everyone being at the house and he's taking the ham out of the oven and the kids are bouncing off the walls. I didn't go like, how can I support you? I actually, I reached out to him like three days before and said, going into this situation, what would support you? But I, I will I'll just put a little bookmark there and say I have another video I want to do called Generosity 2.0, which speaks a little bit more to what you're talking about. So stay tuned. You're like the, the student that's jumping ahead. Um, so, so then asking him, hearing his response, and being willing to believe him. Like, that's what he really wants. And then when I got into, I think I was gonna, Christine, you asked a question, I wanted to touch on this. How can I remind myself in the moment? Right, so this touches on that again a little bit, which was that I, so then I ended up actually on Thanksgiving Day, and there's more people, and that's a higher, um, I don't know, intensity, higher intensity situation for me. And 
to think about how I really reminded myself, but it was, a, it was actually, it was like, it wasn't just the asking one time and then believing him, but it actually, I had to kind of do that throughout the day on Thanksgiving. And in a way it came down to trust, right? It came down to believing that that's what he really wanted and trusting that he was okay. To Jenna's point, I do think there's times to sort of pay attention, like, is that person really okay? But but at this level, there is something that I want to underscore, which is kind of about like actually trusting they are okay. And that I didn't need, there was a point actually in the day where it, actually there were many points, but there were like a couple really big ones where it would have been really easy to like jump in and kind of do my habit of um, kind of like you said, Christina, which is actually like trying to make everything okay for everyone. Let me just check here. Um, <laughs> thanks, Jenna. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Donald. I appreciate that. <laughs> so there were moments, and it is a habit of mine, you know, I want to, and, and again, really, when we're honest, not 100% of the time, but I'd say like 90, like a good 90% of the time, most of the time when we want to jump in and help, it's actually to deal with our own anxiety. So, you know, there were moments where it was like my own anxiety would rise or my own stress or just the intensity of feeling and where it would have been really easy to want to jump in and like handle everybody, handle my, um, you know, my great grandmother or handle my parents or fix a situation or um, go in and start doing things in the kitchen because that's what I should do to help, right? Like I shouldn't leave him with all that work or he, you know, there's too much to do or, but I really trusted that at least some part of him was, it was really telling the truth. And what he wanted mostly was for everybody to enjoy themselves and for us to leave the kitchen alone. And so I would just check in every once in a while and I'd say like, Hey, is there anything you need? Or can I help? And if he said no, I would walk away. And there was a point where he needed to leave to go get his sister. And I just checked, I was like, should we set a timer? Is there anything you want me to do while you're gone? But I really handed it to him, which is like an act of trust, right? That's generous. He said he wants to do it. And it's generous to say like, I believe you. And I trust that you can. I don't actually have to jump in and do it all because you, my friend, you know, my partner, are a massively competent human being and I totally trust you. Allison says, as a lifelong people pleaser, it's been a huge shift to sit in my discomfort and let everyone else deal with their own issues. Yeah, totally. I know, I love that. I remember the first time I heard that, like, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> and that it is, it's huge, Allison. And it, so again, there's this way that it's actually saying, I trust you. And that, so that was kind of my practice all day long. Like, oh, I trust you. I trust that you're gonna tell me the truth. I trust that when I ask if you need help, you're gonna say yes or no, and I can believe you. I trust that I can do what I need to do for me, and you'll be okay. Um, and, and then it was beautiful. Like, he responded by saying, you know, this is what I need, or can you help with this? Would you please do this? And he asked for the things he needed. And I think actually allowing people to, to what would be the word? It was like I let him lead, and I, I don't want to get into kind of the, the, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, masculine, feminine, blah, blah, blah. Like there's whole pieces of that in terms of our dynamic, but even just human to human, I trusted him to do that, and then I just followed. If he said he needed help, like I was happy to do whatever he needed help with, but I didn't think I needed to do it for him. And so again, human to human, that part of us that's willing to actually let other people hold their own part is generous. And the willingness to not assume, oh, I should do all these things, or I should clean up in the kitchen, or I should da 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 and you know, flutter, flutter, flutter to manage my own anxiety, but actually, there were these times where I would sit in a chair, I had like a, you know, a drink in one hand and I would sit in the chair and I was like, I don't have anything to do except be here. And 
I think it's hard sometimes to see that as generosity, but it is. It's actually generous to let people do what the thing they want to do and to trust them, to ask and believe them, to not assume that I know everything that needs to be done. There was this, I'll give one more example um, before I kind of wrap this, wrap this up, but there was, so, <laughs> He's got one of the, he's got a bathroom that has two doors. One goes into a bedroom and one goes out in the living room. And of course, the kids manage to lock both doors uh, with them outside, right? Like they were running through and ha 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 and like playing and somehow locked the doors and then ran out and slammed them. And they did this while he was going and getting his sister. So everyone was locked out of the bathroom and there was kind of this upsurge in activity and everyone went like, oh my God, how are we gonna fix this? And I was like, you know what? Um, when he gets back, he'll know exactly what to do. Like, I'm just gonna text him and let him know this happened. And then <laughs> one of my kids comes over <laughs> and says like, it's like a secret, she's like, She's like, and we smeared toothpaste all over the bathroom sink. And I'm thinking, why in the world would you do this? Like, what could possibly have? But again, instead of sort of freaking out and being like, oh my God, he's gonna freak out when he gets here. I was like, well, you know what? You guys are gonna sit here and when he gets home, like he's gonna deal with you. And you, that's, that's now, you get to wait for it. There's a little bit like, you just wait till your daddy gets home kind of moment. But I didn't, again, I just trusted that I, I, I asked him how he wanted to be supported, he told me, and then I trusted that that was true. I sent him a message, I said, just so you know, this is the situation and I will leave it up to you to deal with them when you get back. Let me know if you want any help. So bottom line, and again, if you either have a share or a question or a clarification, um, happy to hear them. I would say bottom line, this is like generosity 101, is, is being generous enough to ask and not assume. Sometimes, it, again, it's, it's, it's like these moments versus like I might know a lot of ways to support him in general, but there, there's this scenario. It's a particular thing. We've actually never had this situation where we're all in his house for Thanksgiving. And, and so rather than assuming or trying to guess every possible scenario, just ask and like how generous to give this person that you care about the opportunity to tell you how you can love them best, how you can support them best. Uh, how can you invite people to ask and not assume? So I think what you're asking, Rachel, is the other people in your life, um, how can you invite them to ask you rather than assume how to support you? So that's, maybe it's kind of a sub point. Um, this is like generosity 1.2 or something, which is, that's the other side of it, which is being generous and letting people know. Um, and, and possibly letting them know before they start assuming. So these, these kinds of like Thanksgiving, family, holiday, these, these situations, like we know that they're high intensity for everybody. So now it depends, it depends on your relationship. Your mother may not, she may not have the capacity or the willingness or you may not be able to let her know and have her actually receive that. But your partner might like going in be like, hey baby, it's so hard for me to be with my family or it's so hard for me to be in this state where it's really cold or where it's like, like just whatever it is, like this is hard for me and I would love it if you could help me in this way. Um, was I, I was talking to a client the other day and she was talking about visiting her family and how like clockwork they, she and her partner have like a breakdown. It's like second day, the afternoon, this kind of a thing. And I, I said, yeah, go to him and say like, hey, this is really hard for me and I don't know what to do. Can you help me in this way? Can you even, you know, can you support me by noticing when I'm about to be in breakdown? Can you support me by reminding me that we need to get out of the house on the morning of the first day or the morning of the second day 
because it's always by the afternoon of the second day that we have a breakdown. Like, I, I, I don't seem to be able to do this myself. Can you help me in this way? Um, so does that help, Rachel? Let me know if that, if that actually is what you're asking and if that was a useful clarification. But yeah, being generous and saying like, hey, this is how you can support me. And again, like I reached out to my boyfriend, you know, three days before Thanksgiving. You could do it a week before. Something like not when you're in the moment and they're actually not supporting you the way you want to be and then getting really like critical about it, but actually ahead of time, hey, this is where I need help. I can't do this alone. Will you help me in this way? Um, how am I teaching this to my children? That is such a great question, Allison. Um, mm. So two things come to mind. I don't know that I've been super conscious about this. Um, so that's partly why I really love this question, Allison. And, and I don't know that this is, you know, anything having to do with my kids, I half jokingly, but not really, um, say like ask me in 30 years because then we'll actually see was it helpful or not, you know. But I would say the two things that I notice that I do with them, one is I do think as parents, and this of course shifts as they get a little older, but I think even in some ways there is this other phase of teenage years where they kind of need the same thing that they needed when they were really young, but just kind of address slightly differently, but that it's actually our job as parents to notice what they need and and almost like tell them because they're not, um, I think it's like their nervous systems, their brains, their, um, their hormones, all that, like they're actually not capable of regulating themselves yet. And if they were, you know, they, they would I mean, not that we do a great job of this either, says the woman who watched like a billion episodes of Scandal over a really short period of time. But, you know, my kids, if I just said, what do you want? They'd be like, candy, we want candy and movies, which isn't actually regulating for them, right? Like what they want and what they need are really different. And so I, a lot of times I do think of it as my role as the parent to see what they need and then tell them that they need it or give it to them in a way. It's sort of like I put food in front of them and I'm like, it's time for you to eat. Even if they, you know, if I'd said, are you hungry? They would say no, because they're playing Legos and they don't want to stop. Or a lot of times I'll say, do you need to go pee? And they say no, but then I'll say like, okay, I need you to look at me and sit still and breathe for three breaths. And then they'll be like, I can't sit still, I have to go pee. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> And so I think I teach them partly by bringing their attention to what they need, but not by asking them because they usually can't find that, but more like creating the conditions where they come in contact with what they need. And then the other is mostly by modeling. Like they'll just demand something and then I'll say like, oh, how would you know, do you want to ask me for something? And so it's trying to continue to invite them, like if they are aware of wanting or needing something, is somehow bringing their awareness to how do they ask for that in a generous way that makes me actually want to give it to them. And they've gotten, you know, they get to the point where they say like, we're hungry, and I'll say, excuse me? And they'll say, please can we have some food, mama? <laughs> I'm like, thank you, I'd be happy to get you some food, you know, something like that. So um, I hope that's helpful, Allison, and uh, I I think I will close by saying that, well, let me just see. Um, love how you get them to slow down and focus. Yeah, exactly. Like I think teenagers, that that there is, it from, again, I don't have teenagers. So, you know, I say all this, take it with a grain of salt. But what I've seen and what I've heard other parents speak to is how much there's like something happening in the teenage experience that's so similar actually to those very young years and that there's this need to be kind of slowed down. Um, so yes, Barry, our children, they make, they also make the greatest teachers. It's man, <laughs> it's a doozy. Um, I think I just want to say, and I probably should have said this at the beginning, but for me, this idea of generosity and how do we um, what are the ways that we can be generous, both in terms of the energetic, like what's behind this? So there's an energetic behind this 
kind of generosity 101 piece of, you know, ask, don't assume. Be willing to not know and be willing to um, be willing to be surprised. There's an energetic of, of the asking, of not needing to know, and then the trusting. So there's this beautiful um, energetics to generosity, and then the specifics, like how do we actually do this? Because I can say, be generous, you know, tell I'm blue in the face, and most of us are going like, yeah, but what does that mean? Or um, we think that by doing everything for somebody, we're being generous. And it's one of the reasons that this example with my boyfriend really stood out was like, oh, he didn't want me to do everything. And it would actually not have been generous. It would have been selfish because it would have been trying to handle my own anxiety rather than truly wanting to support him. But I believe that this, all these layers of generosity, that this is possibly like the most important thing that we can do as human beings for one another is really learn how to be generous with each other. So um, there's a lot I wanna say about this and this is just one piece. And I, I so appreciate all of you who were with me live and who brought your shares and um, questions that your questions just like they always really help clarify things for me so I really appreciate them <laughs> um, thank you for being generous with your questions and your shares and if you're watching the replay again please feel free to either respond to other people's shares with your own pieces or to anything that I said and I'll come back and continue the dialogue in you know more written form um, but thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.